So, we continue our discussion on the metal semiconductor contacts and metal source drain junction MOSFETs. <coughs> so, we discussed last time that in the case of the MOSFET with junctions, p n junction as the source drain contacts, the when you apply gate voltage, the entire barrier height at the source end reduces by twice five. So, because of that, the electrons are able to inject across that. That is the electron distribution in the n plus region. Whereas, in the case of metal semiconductor contact, the the metal, the barrier to the metal phi b n does not change. When I apply voltage across that by applying gate V g s plus in fact, it is this potential barrier which is changing on the silicon side, not this one. So, as a result, the number of electrons which are available for transport from the metal to semiconductor are limited to the those electrons which have energies above the 5 p n that does not change. Whereas, in the this type of when there is a n plus junction, n plus p junction, that barrier itself changes by twice 5 f that is the difference. So, what we see is if you want to have a large supply of electrons here, the 5 b n should be small, barrier height should be small. That means, it should make ideally it should make an ohmic contact onto this channel. Okay. And of course, the electrons which are injected here can be rolling down in this because of voltage drop in the channel, it will be collected. The current will be limited by the supply available here. So, you need to reduce the barrier height phi b n. So, what one immediately think of is phi m minus chi on n type material will give you barrier high barrier height phi m greater than chi, but if phi m is small then it will give ohmic contact ideally, but what we have seen is the metal semiconductor contacts okay, the barrier height onto the n type material phi b n is given by this relationship experimentally one could fit it into this type of curve. So, here you can see when gamma equal to 1 what is gamma we will see shortly when gamma equal to 1 gamma is between 0 and 1 when gamma equal to 1 the second term is 0 when gamma is equal to 1 phi b n is phi minus chi that is ideal. So, if you vary the phi m you should be have the variation in phi b n, but we are not getting that in some cases we get phi b n constant independent of phi m when the fresh liquid surfaces. So, this phi naught is actually the we discussed earlier the neutral level it is the energy difference between the neutral level and the valence band for silicon and gallium arsenide that is V g by 3 and in germanium it is equal to 0.09 electron volts, band gap is 0 0.66 electron volts, this is very close to the valence band this phi naught. We will see it more about that now. So, gamma is called the pending factor and it varies between 0 and 1, the value depends upon the surface condition. Gamma equal to 1 expected from first order theory phi minus chi, phi b n is phi minus chi we saw if gamma equal to 1 that is ideal. Gamma equal to 0 with freshly cleaved surfaces gamma equal to 0 means actually equally it will be independent of phi m. Freshly cleaved surfaces we saw that phi b n is constant independent of work function and you can immediately correlate that in a freshly cleaved surface the surface state density or interface state density is very high. So, we could guess that the entire deviation from the ideality is due to the presence of surface states which we did not take into account in ideal theory gamma is when it is between 0 and 1 that is the chemically prepared surface you get some variation with phi m, but not as much as phi minus chi. Okay. Now, let us take a look at what happens there. So, evidently because you get when a freshly cleaved surface gamma equal to 0 or phi b n independent of the work function indicates that it is due to the surface state or interface state density surface is never ideal and as the density of states which we call represent by 
d a t per centimeter square per electron volt due to the dangling bonds at the on the surface. Also, there is always a very thin layer of native oxide or some adsorbed layer, okay, mostly native oxide between the metal and the semiconductor surface. So, if you take a freshly cleaved surface or a semiconductor surface and put a metal, it is not directly in contact with the silicon. It is there is some small gap between them which, which, which is a native oxide or some adsorbed layer and that we call it a delta may be nanometer or fraction of a nanometer of that order. So, d a t and delta t values determine gamma. So, deviation from the ideal t is some thin layer presence and interface state density. Those two are responsible for giving rise to this gamma. Okay. Ideally, delta is 0 d a t equal to 0, you will get gamma equal to 1 and you get phi minus chi. Okay. This we have seen in details, I do not have to go through that. So, to recap, re remember what you discussed, if you take surface of a semiconductor, there are a lot um, high density of interface states unless it is passivated and they are all donors below a neutral level E naught, above that they are acceptors. If the Fermi level coincides with the E naught due to the doping in the bulk, if the Fermi level coincides with E naught, all the charges donor levels are occupied that is neutral, all the acceptor levels are not occupied that is neutral. That is why called that as neutral level. And usually we represent the distance between the the energy gap between the E naught and valence band as phi naught. That is the phi naught which was coming in that expression. Okay. E naught is neutral level, E naught minus E V is phi naught. If E f is equal to E naught, that charge on the surface is 0, surface is neutral. That is what we have done. Now, in the n type semiconductor, Fermi level is there. So, all the levels below this Fermi level between E f and E naught are occupied by electrons, they are negative, they are acceptor levels. Above the neutral level, they are acceptors. When electron occupies that, it is negatively charged, and those negative charges have been taken from the bulk of the semi semiconductor. As a result, it is depleted. So, the actual diagram will not be like this, that will be like that. We have seen that because the electrons in the surface have been donated from this depletion layer. So, here you can see even if you do not put the metal there, the electron transfer has taken place and the Fermi level is getting closer and closer to this neutral level E naught and the charge in the interface here for a free surface is equal to Q into d i t, where d i t is per centimeter square per electron volt. So, the number of acceptors present between E f and E naught are E f minus E naught into d i t. So, charge is negative there which is minus q d a t into e f minus e naught. So, that charge has come from this depletion layer. So, q a t in magnitude is equal to the q d in the depletion layer which is q n d into w, w is the depletion layer. Okay. So, you can see that Fermi level moves closer to neutral level e naught. Supposing the d i t is tending to infinity, infinite with a very small gap between the E f and E naught, you will get the required charges for the depletion layer. It can never coincide with the E naught, but it will get closer and closer. If d a t is tending to very large value, E f minus E naught tends to 0. In the, in the sense, Fermi level moves closer and closer to this E naught. So, you say if d a t is very, very large, the Fermi level gets pinned to the E naught level. That is called Fermi level pinning. So, if Fermi level is pinning, you can see that this is coinciding with that okay. and the gap between the top layer and this Fermi level that is a phi b n when I put a metal. So, now that particular formula that we have put there, this one has been derived way back in 1960s, still holds good. Cowley and Zay, they have derived that equation for that like using the assumption that the derivation I just quickly run through that the assumption is that there is always a thin layer delta okay, 
and there is always a density of interface states d i t across the band gap. So, this is that may be assuming that it is oxide this is the band gap of the conduction band of the oxide valence band of the oxide and this is the silicon. You can see that there is band bending here and ultimately in thermal equilibrium there is Fermi level is flat like this between the metal and the semiconductor at the same time. So, let us see what happened. This is the Fermi level and that is a vacuum level that is phi m. Now, this layer is very thin. So, if the electrons have energy above this they can tunnel through that 1 nanometer or less. So, this is still the phi b n okay, where the conduction band is coming into this point. There are large density of states available here electrons here can cut across into this they can cross. Similarly, electrons can cross from here to here. When we discussed Schottky bear very theory, we said there is 0 there and it was just a barrier of state available there. Now, on this side of the semiconductor, there is a depletion layer which has a charge q d and in the interface there is a charge between the Fermi level and the neutral level except as. So, that is q i t this band diagram I have drawn like this because if I assume that plus charges are there minus charges are there there is a voltage drop plus to minus there. Okay. Uh, this can be corrected by the noting the charge afterwards. So, there is a electric field in this direction from plus to minus here and there is a voltage drop equal to V i. What is the voltage drop across the oxide usually? Whatever charge is there beyond the oxide surface divided by C oxide. In this case, I call it a C i C interface. So, you have got the voltage drop equal to q d there is a depletion charge per centimeter square plus q i t whatever charge is present in this red mark that I have shown between the Fermi level and d naught. So, q d plus q i t divided by C i is the voltage drop across the oxide. This may be a small drop, but that affects your bare head phi b n. See, when this layer was not there we said phi b n is equal to phi m minus chi. Now, it is phi m minus v i minus chi. So, instead of phi m minus chi you have got a term v i which is the drop across oxide. Okay. So, phi b n is that quantity. So, all that we have to calculate is what is v i voltage drop across oxide that is this q d plus q a t by C i. Q d is positive here, Q a t is actually negative. So, if it is negative it may go even that way. If Q d is not there or if Q if total charge is negative the voltage drop will be plus minus instead of plus here minus it may go other way. Drop will be rising from that uh, from that direction. So, now I have taken that this whole thing is positive then I put it marked like this. So, I have written this V i. What is V i now? Q d of course, once you know what is the surface potential, you know what is the depletion layer width is, what is the charge is. But when that interface state density is very high, it will be this term which will be dominating compared to that. Okay, let us see Q i t is this quantity, Q d i t where d i t is the interface state density into E f minus E naught. What is E f minus E naught? Take a look at this band gap. I have assigned this quantity as phi b n and this quantity below this E naught is equal to up to this point is phi naught. See E naught below E naught to that band that is phi naught and that quantity is phi b n. So, we have got E g minus phi b n minus phi naught is E f minus E naught. So, from the total band gap here I subtract this quantity and that quantity and that with this quantity. So, the charge in that gap is equal to q d 8 into E f minus E naught. I am putting it as negative because 
we are putting it as negative because they are acceptors. So, that is why I put it as negative. Okay. So, if I do not have q d, if that is negative, the drop will be minus here and plus here. So, field will be in the opposite direction up upward. Okay. So, that is taken care of by the sign. So, that is substitute for this v i as minus q d i t f minus c naught by c i. So, I what we are looking at is what is phi b n now? Phi b n is phi m minus chi minus v i, what we have wrote written there, and v i is q d plus q i t by c i and q i t minus is q d i t f minus e naught, that is q d i t e g minus, this is what we have just now seen, okay. this is what we have just, saw just now seen, q i t is band gap minus phi naught minus phi b n here band gap minus phi naught minus phi b n that is the what is left out is e f minus e naught. Okay. So, q d is charge per centimeter square in depleted region of space star layer positive in anti silicon c i is capacitance of the interface uh, layer layer per centimeter square epsilon r epsilon 0 by delta standard. So, let us go back and see the phi b n. So, phi b n is phi a minus chi plus v i, this whole thing is v i, that is because this is plus q d i, that is minus okay, q d i by c i, uh, this whole thing is minus. So, this minus stays with that plus charge, this charge is negative, so that becomes plus. So, q d i t by c i to this is what you just now written, this is a v i due to d i t. Okay. Due to q i t, this is that quantity. q i t by c i c i is that quantity. Now, I will not go through that thing, you can actually work it out yourself. This rearranging the whole thing, you can see there is 5 b n here, 5 b n here. Take them to the left hand side and right side, I can write it as 5 b n, if you put 5 b n onto that side, you will have phi b n into 1 plus q d a t by c i going to left hand side. So, you will have phi b n is equal to gamma times phi m minus chi, where gamma is actually 1, 1 by 1 plus q d a t by that. So, that is by rearranging that. All that I do is take this on to that side. So, you got phi b n into 1 plus phi okay, q 1 plus q d a t by d is equal. So, you let us not worry about that. So, you get rearranging you get gamma phi minus chi 1 minus gamma e g minus phi naught phi b n has gone that side. So, only e g minus phi naught is there and this term is there that is that, is that uh, gamma term comes into this particular quantity okay? because gamma is this quantity because when you take it out there you are dividing right through by 1 plus q d a t by d, that quantity that is gamma. So, now you can see if gamma equal to 0, when will gamma be equal to 0? d i t is very large. When d i t is very large, infinity, finite, gamma will be equal to 0. So, gamma equal to 0 means this term is equal to 1 and this is equal to 0, that is equal to 0. So, when the d i t is very, very large, phi b n is equal to e g minus phi naught independent of phi m because gamma equal to 1. That falls with uh, that supports the equation that we have written there that is this gamma is related to uh, related to delta and d a t. C i is that is so, it depends upon delta and d a t. If delta is 0 of course, you would not get anything. So, gamma equal to 0 when d i t equal to infinite okay, and phi b n is e g minus phi naught, this is called Bardeen's limit of phi b n, this is independent of phi m. Why do you call Bardeen's limit? The surface states were uh, proposed by Bardeen, who was no, who is one of the Nobel laureates who invented the transistor, bipolar transistor. In fact, 
when the MOSFET did, did not work as expected, he proposed the theory of surface states, interface states, and explained the whole thing. And that is why those surface state theory is called Bardeen's theory of surface states. Oh, this is limit is called the Bardeen's limit, high d at phi b n e c g minus phi naught. Gamma equal to 1, d at equal to 0 or delta equal to 0, ideal phi minus chi. That is called Schottky limit. Because Schottky and Bethe, they gave the theory of this, this Schottky diode and a barrier saying that phi minus chi is the barrier. So, ideally, Schottky limit on the extreme end, Bardeen's limit. Now, you can see if it is ideal, then you can vary the phi m and vary the phi b n, but it does not happen. But in the worst case, in the worst case, phi b n is equal to e g minus phi naught. So, what is the uh, result of that? In silicon, phi naught is one third phi naught is e g by 3. So, what will be the phi b n in silicon? For most of the semiconductors, it will be e g minus e g by 3, that is two thirds of e g. So, 1.1 1 .1 is the band gap. So, you will have, you will have the uh, barrier height of 0 0.7, 0 0.75 electron volts, it will always be rectifying because the barrier is high. If the barrier height is low, you would have got ohmic contact. So, if you get rectifying in the case of uh, n type material, if you make in the p type material, again formula will be there. What will be the barrier height 5 bp? Supposing this is 2 thirds of e g for the p type material, barrier height for holes will be e g minus that. See, that is two thirds, that is barrier height for electrons, this is barrier height for holes. So, if this is two thirds e g, that is one third e g. So, barrier height for holes will be smaller. So, it will be easier to make p channel devices with metal semiconductor contact, because it makes only contact onto the uh, with holes or p channel. Okay? So, this is what we showed for germanium. Germanium you see the barrier height for electrons was something like that 0.66 is the band gap and it was very close to the band gap there. When the phi m is varied, very little change in the barrier height. So, in germanium it is a hopeless situation to make a, a n channel MOSFET because it will form a barrier height is equal to very close to the band gap. Band gap is 0.66, phi naught is 0.09. So, very close to 0.6 electron volts. So, it will be a very bad situation to make n channel device, but anything you deposit on germanium will make ohmic contact because barrier height is very small for holes. So, you will have it will be very easy, it will be very easy to make p channel MOSFETs with uh, metal semiconductor contact with germanium. That is good news for people who want to make germanium p channel MOSFETs. So, if you want to get uh, n channel MOSFET with germanium or silicon, you have got to do something else. Okay. So, let us just uh, see what uh, what are the situation there. So, this is the Fermi level pinning which I was talking of. In the case of gallium arsenide, etcetera, it is two thirds of E g phi b n. In the case of germanium, phi naught is 0.09, therefore, phi b n is about 0.57. So, rectifying always you put a metal on these semiconductors, it will make rectifying contact. So, it is very easy to make Schottky barrier diodes on one n type, n type materials and it is very difficult to make ohmic contacts that. So, effect of Fermi level pinning, almost all metals form rectifying contact on n type silicon and gallium arsenide and also on germanium. They form lower barrier head contacts that is ohmic contact on p type silicon and p type gallium arsenide. It is easier to therefore, it is easier to realize p channel Schottky barrier source, source strain MOSFETs than n channel Schottky barrier source strain MOSFETs on silicon and gallium arsenide and germanium because n channel will make it a high barrier height. So, number of electrons which are available for 
So, applying to the channel will be limited by this if you could recall, call, go back to this one if you see. See if this barrier height is high here, number of electrons which are available which can cross the barrier are reduced less that is a problem. So, okay. so, normally when you put a metal it becomes rectifying unless you take care of do something to the surface to unpin that Fermi level. Okay. Now, just quickly go through some of the things that are there like the p channel sort of the first of those you know way back this was done by by Z and Kwanake platinum silicide metal semiconductor contact at the source this is not the n plus or so once you see that you you can make uh, easily ohmic contact onto the p channel materials if it uh, p type materials if it is a p channel transistor platinum silicide can make ohmic contact onto that that is low barrier rate for holes. So, people thought of making let us see p channel short key barrier source strain MOSFET on silicon they made that same approach gate oxide about 25 nanometers see, we are talking of 1981. So, gate oxide 25 nanometer and forces poly gate I have shown it as the metal, but it is phosphorus doped polysilicon gate they have used that and then what they did was the transistor width was w and its channel length was l 1 micron to 10 micron various lengths long channel behavior seen in for L equal to 1 micron. So, n type silicon 10 to the 15 just go through quickly phosphorus doped gate polysilicon was deposited pattern and its sides were protected by deposited SI wood first the gate was decided sides were protected SI wood, SI wood was removed from source and drain regions where you want to put this contact SI wood was removed. Okay approximately about 15 nanometer of platinum was sputtered and then sintered at 625 degree centigrade for 30 minutes in argon to form platinum silicide. In fact, it consumes silicon that is why it is shown here as getting inside into silicon it consumes silicon and you get about 30 nanometers of platinum silicide over all the previously deposited silicon region wherever previously exposed wherever it is exposed you get that platinum silicide other places there is no silicon there is no platinum silicide. So, what you do is the unreacted platinum was removed by aqua regia or you can use some reactive plasma etching. Okay. 5 B p the nice thing about that is 5 B p is very low with holes or with p channel that is barrier height is low that is about 0.24 electron volt is close to the Fermi level spinning type. Okay. So, that means actually you can make transistors working transistor because barrier height for holes is very very small the supply of holes is very much. Now, let us just quickly take a look at it the energy band diagram if you like that is the n type silicon there is a platinum silicide contact here there is a depletion layer here. So, n type is bent no gate oxide or no voltage applied to the gate that is the depletion layer there is the n type region there is a conduction band there is a balance band the issue to show the balance band. Okay. Now, when I have a metal oxide over that and if I apply a plus voltage to that the surface and the surface if you take the energy band diagram that will be inverted n has become p so, this is very interesting diagram please take a look at that there it was like that I have not applied any drain voltage still it is thermal equilibrium situation there. So, that is the Fermi level and here this metal semiconductor contact there will be a depleted layer here just in this point, p and uh, this metal and p channel it is like a 
metal and p type semiconductor it is equivalent of that. So, there will be depleted layer there small layer will be there there is a diode it is the n cha p channel with the metal semiconductor contact p and metal and p almost equivalent of that you have got a slightly depleted layer there is an energy band diagram. Now, if I apply voltage to the drain the p channel device I want to collect the holes negative voltage to the drain. If I apply negative voltage to the drain I am looking this energy band diagram is not in the bulk it is here on the top here it is still n type. So, on the top only I am drawing the diagram. So, what happens to diagram minus here plus here. So, across this the shaded region is actually the inverted p layer there is a drop plus to minus if there is plus to minus here there is a small depleted layer there there is a n p diode energy band diagram bends you know it is deep more difficult to take electrons from plus to minus that means, the energy band diagram will be higher on this side. So, it bends upwards from the left hand side to the right hand side. So, the indication is there is minus there and plus here. Now, whatever holes which are injected bang can go through this. How much it is collected here depends upon how much is the voltage across the channel and if this is small that can supply that. If this barrier head is large it cannot supply that current supply will be limited that is why this, this sort of devices worked. But what they say about saw was the output currents in the short key barrier MOSFETs were found to be smaller than those for conventional MOSFET. Okay. If this were n plus region p plus region you would have got more current than that. The whole thing is because some part of the applied voltage goes into this one. See this diode if you recall I do not know whether you are able to recall that. Uh, when I have no bias across that the hole injection from here and here will be cancelling each other. If I have net hole injection from here to here I must reduce the barrier I must reverse bias that okay, that is minus here plus here. So, part of the applied voltage will go to this junction plus minus here. So, that this barrier is increased this is brought down there. So, when you have a I do not know whether you remember see if you go to this one. n type if you take. See if I do not have some drop here across this layer there here it is plus and minus the electron injected from here and here is the same thing. I must have a plus voltage here. So, that this is metal n type region is reverse biased. So, that this is brought down a bit. So, electrons cannot be injected from here to here only these electrons are injected backward same argument holds good for the case of p channel device instead of plus minus it is minus plus. So, part of the applied voltage will go into this junction. So, the full thing is not available for that okay, for a current transport. Okay, so, now so you get equivalently you can put this as okay, in this this is the inverted diagram this is before inversion, this is after inversion the whole injection from here to here is possible if there is some reduction of the barrier on this side. So, this portion you are putting it as a diode in fact what happens is the applied voltage minus here okay, is appearing across some part of it goes into this region minus here and plus here means it is reverse biased the diode when it is reverse see the most important concept in short key barrier is it can in, in the if it is a n type material it can inject electrons from the metal to semiconductor if it is reverse biased. When it is forward biased if it injects electrons from the semiconductor to the metal the p channel device it can inject holes from the semiconductor to the metal if it is reverse biased if it is forward biased if it can it can inject electro holes from the semiconductor to the metal. So, this will be reverse biased condition minus plus. So, applied voltage gets shared between this and this. So, part of the voltage goes there 
more and more voltage is get reversed, but more and more carriers can be injected across the barrier. Okay. So, I think uh, is, that is you bring one of the barriers, this barrier is not changing. Okay. Only this barrier you can reduce. That is, you can bring it down so that the carry electrons which are distributed above that, their level is brought down. There is no injection from the right to the left. Okay. But this barrier is not changed, so there will be electron, uh, injection of carriers from here, either holes or electrons. So, in either way, a reverse bias voltage should appear across there, which comes from the drain itself. So, part of the voltage will go to that. So, current available for conduction will be reduced. Okay. Or, to put it in the more emphatic way, number of holes available here is depends upon how much lower the barrier is. Less the barrier, more holes are available. So, the current in these cases was observed to be lower than what it is. So, the key thing in these devices is to reduce the barrier height, the P channel. Now, let us see whether people have tried to do something about the n channel devices. So, what they did here, they fabricated n channel devices. They used a tantalum. Okay. 5 B n is 5 B p is 0.7 electron volts. The 5 B p is large there, 5 B n is small there. So, they were hoping that they can just have some uh, some sort of short key barrier. So, they made it is the same way they have done the thing. You can see that the n channel short key barrier MOSFET structure T oxide 90 nanometer L 10 micrometer they are not to be they do not want to worry about short channel effects etcetera. 100 nanometer thick tantalum ion beam deposited on the and sintered at 450 for 30 minutes in forming gas. Okay. Defined by etching in the to define this portion after forming this gate region polysilicon exactly same way before you open a contact tantalum sputtered annealed in forming gas that forming gas annealing has slightly passivated those interface states. So, because of that they could get some sort of uh, MOSFET action. So, that is what. So, you can see now when you invert it and if I apply plus voltage drain that is energy band diagram conduction band balance band. I hope you understand this. In the previous case you had the band diagram going up there because plus to minus here it is minus to plus drain is plus then channel device. So, same problem they had ideally if you can get the MOSFET characteristic like this they got you know same equivalent circuit the MOSFET with the diode which is the source channel diode in the previous case it was P to metal in that case it is metal to n diode is reversed that is the diode. Now, you can see when I have a plus voltage plus minus plus minus this is reverse biased when it is reverse biased it enables electrons to be injected from the source to the channel, but for the electrons to be injected from source to the channel that must be a reverse bias across that that comes from this applied voltage. So, part of the applied voltage goes into this diode that is why in the ideal MOSFET you may get the characteristic like that, but ideal means the, the source and drain diffused in the metal semiconductor contact the, the there is a for the same current you have to go apply higher voltage because part of the voltage has gone to this V s. So, that is V d minus V s is the one. So, you can use the same equation that you use for the MOSFET. So, they did get MOSFET action, but lower currents or you apply more drain voltage for that. This is to the barrier between the source and this channel this is the thing that they observed. Now, you can write the equation the I d. So, you can see the drain current you can write in terms of the potential drop across the channel. What is the potential drop across the channel? 
V d s minus that V of s. Source is not 0, but part of it has gone to that. So, V d s minus. So, in the linear region you get V c oxide of the well, same MOSFET equation into V g minus V threshold into V d s you write, but V d s in this case V d minus V of s. V d minus V of s. V of s is the drop across the diode. That is the short key diode which is between the channel and the uh, metal minus V d s square by 2, but V d s is V d minus V of s. So, you can see this entire thing is smaller than what you usually see for a given V d. And just notice this is the current which is collected by this voltage across the channel V d minus V of s. So, whatever current has is flowing through the channel is supplied by the source. What is the current supplied by the source? The reverse bias current of the diode. Correct? Because through across the barrier. So, that is why the reverse bias voltage keeps on increasing as you increase that and it supplies more and more current. But at each point, whatever is the V of s is the reverse bias voltage across the diode. What is the reverse current across the diode? A star t squared this quantity into 1 minus this quantity. When V s is very very large that goes down to 0 and you get the I naught. So, maximum that you can get is the I naught of the diode. So, I naught of the diode will be unlimited if it is ohmic. If the barrier is very small you can have large I naught. So, whether it is controlled by this short key diode reverse current or by this MOSFET action depends upon the barrier height. So, lower barrier height is a key thing for this entire MOSFET thing. So, just let me quickly go through some of the things that uh, latest things which are there before I wind up this thing. So, they have tried varieties of materials without desperation on this thing because to get down to this because it has several advantages. Silicides of other materials for n channel short key source strain transistors have been tried. For p channel devices, platinum silicide is very good. Way back 1981 itself demonstrated that gives 0 0.24 to 0.285 bp for p channel devices. You get I on of about 10 to power 8. So, p channel devices in the case of silicon is no problem. From the same token, what about p channel devices in the case of germanium? What will you say? What is the barrier head there? Here it is 0.24. When the Fermi level pinning is there in the case of p channel device or p type substrate, it is 0.09 is the barrier head, very, very small. So, excellent ohmic contact you can get for germanium, excellent p channel MOSFETs can be made with germanium. That means very good news for germanium people. Because germanium has got hole mobility much larger than that of hole mobility in silicon. So, you can think of germanium p channel MOSFETs, but then if you get low barrier head for holes on the same token you will say that barrier head for electrons is high. Very difficult to make n channel devices. Okay? We will get down to those things either in this lecture or when you go to germanium devices. So, here silicon was the desperation. Okay? They have the adbium metal which has 5 m of that quantity, they got fairly good ion of ratios. Iterbium gave much smaller barrier head. Okay? So, iterbium was the one that they advocated for n channel, p channel no issue, p channel platinum silicide, iterbium silicide. So, those are the things which have they have tried out and iterbium gave about 5 bn of about 0.27. So, some sort of accepted devices they were fabricated there. Of course, they had to make some passivation using that forming gas annealing etcetera, but not enough you should get better. Okay. So, in summary of this about uh, these things quickly go through because I have few more things to discuss. The metal semi source drain are inherently lower resistance uh, uh, you know, this is all we have discussed already. Low resistance you can get when you use metal source drain, metal source drain junctions to the channel, 
form short key barrier it forms ok all this short key barrier junctions eliminate parasitic BJT we already discussed that I am not this is not summary of my talk, but again advertisement for the short key barrier devices. Also low thermal budget to make the metal contact onto the source chain, you do not have to have uh, high temperature diffusion and if it is low temperature short key, it is excellent to make high k dielectrics. That is why people are looking at into metal semiconductor source chain. High k dielectric when you put, you may realize the gate etcetera, you can even go for metal gate. Then afterwards, so, then you do not want to do diffusion, you want to do it at low temperature, you can use that uh, metal semiconductor contact. So, that is why people are looking more and more into that in nano scale devices. Together, these features and benefits make short key barrier CMOS technology an attractive candidate for scale scaling to sub <coughs> nanometer below 25 nanometer, coupled with SOA pro approach promises down to 10 nanometer. Okay. Now, present status, I just have some of things from 2004 right up to uh, re recent ones. Considerable advancement has taken place in short key barrier most theory for the past decade. Platinum seal side source strain devices with 25 nanometer all those things have been demonstrated mainly for p channel. The on current and off current of these devices do not admit the requirements ITRS requirements even though short key barrier p MOSFETs with 280 gigahertz ok 30 nanometer gate lengths have been fabricated even as early as 2004 p channel devices have been fabricated highest for any MOSFET ok because of that low resistance etcetera p channel not n channel. Yttrium uh, ytterbium not yttrium ytterbium silicide has been identified as an alternative to other materials because barrier heat is low. So, that is one of the things people have been looking at to some degree of uh, success. Now, there is a small hitch. You may be able to make n channel MOSFETs with the terbium with 0.275 bn, but for if you use the same approach for p channel device, the 5 bp is large. Okay, because 5 b n if it is small 5 b p is large, because you know that 5 b n plus plus 5 b p is e g. So, you will end up with large barrier height for the p channel. So, you if you want to make CMOS, you must have the ability to overcome this problem not by adjusting the work function, you must have the ability to have both 5 b p under your control and 5 b n under your control. So, if I am using platinum silicide as contact, I can make p channel MOSFET without any difficulty because barrier height is very small 0.24 electron volt. Even in germanium, I can make it very small because it is very, very small, not 9 per minute opening. So, the short key barrier height. 5 b of platinum silicide contacts on n type silicon was you can tune that if you can tune that barrier height by sulfur using sulfur as a passive or Im implanting sulfur you are in business because you let us see how it is done the contacts on n type silicon was tuned by sulfur segregation at the platinum silicide silicon interface Platinum silicide contacts were found by rapid thermal annealing at 450 degree centigrade for 30 seconds in nitrogen ambient. So, what is done is take n type substrate to study this. If you want to make n channel, you have to take p type and implant sulfur. Sulfur was implanted to prior to platinum deposition. First implant sulfur 
and segregate at the interface during platinum suicide forming. Implant sulfur, deposit platinum, anneal at 450 degree centigrade, rapid thermal annealing. What is rapid thermal annealing? Take the temperature very quickly, spike 30 seconds, bring it down. Okay. If you keep long enough in at 450 degree centigrade, the sulfur may come out. Now, what happens? It just segregates into interface. Platinum suicide is formed, it is just segregating. Segregating means it is getting cluster of sulfur at the platinum silicide silicon surface. It is observed that barrier height could be tuned by changing the sulfur dose. Okay. A minimum barrier height up to 0.12 electron volts was observed on n type 100 silicon surface. That is very good news. See, if you do not implant, you get a barrier height of how much? 1.1 minus 0.24. So, about 0.8 or so, 0.8 to 6 or so per hit, but on p type you get 0.24 or 0.2 to 0.24 ultron volt low barrier hit. On n type I can adjust the dose and get low barrier hit, that means I can make n channel devices on that. Since platinum silicide naturally provides a small 5 bp, oh, this by b has come platinum, 5 b of 0.2 electron volts on p type silicon it carries the potential to serve as single metal source drain contact metal on CMOS integrated circuits. I hope you understand that. Same platinum can be used in the regions where you want to make p channel MOSFET do not implant sulfur. You get a barrier rate which is 5 bp low for the p channel 0.2 electron volts. In the region where you want to make n channel devices you implant sulfur. You can control that barrier height by controlling the dose of sulfur. So, you can make low barrier height for n channel. So, what happens there? Why this sort of thing? You are moving the changing the location of that pinning. Okay. So, this is one of those papers which appeared in 2009. When channels, Schottky barrier, source drain MOSFET sulfur implantation and silicide formation for n channel devices. Tuning of platinum silicide short key barrier height on n silicon by sulfur segregation. So, sulfur implantation dose okay, per centimeter square 2 into 10 to the power 13 4, 4 6 8 10 10 to the power 14 per centimeter square barrier height originally is 0 0.8 if you do not implant. If you take entire material and make platinum silicide, it is about 0 0.8, but for different doses the barrier height is reduced to even very small, we can reduce that. What they have observed is sulfur is known to create donor like deep trap level near the conduction band of silicon. See, this is actually what I have shown as a density, a clustered region of sulfur donor levels here. See, if you take usually, usually what you do is you have the energy band diagram like that, conduction band balance band. You have the neutral level here, you have all these are donors, all these are acceptors. The Fermi level always tends to get pinned to the neutral level to balance everything. So, that is why Fermi level goes here in this portion. Okay? That is the E f gets to pin to that, but now in this case what you are doing is you are what you do is you have this energy band diagram like this, you have large density of sulfur which are donors there. So, you have got originally you had all donors here and all acceptors there, 
Now, there is a large density of donors here, much more larger than that 10 to the 14 etcetera you are implanting. So, Fermi will get spin down to this portion. How much this is actually not like that, in fact, it will be distributed like this donor levels. Okay. So, Fermi level gets pinned down to this portion where the density of donors are very large, even compensating all these things. It is equivalent of saying you have got donor levels here, the acceptors here and donor levels here. So, Fermi level will go into that portion. Okay. Let me put it down again. to put it more uh, clearly that is the conduction band and that is the balance band then you have got donors large density of donors here they are acceptors okay so you can say that neutral level is actually somewhere here this is much more than this donor which are there present so your fermi level actually gets pinned down to this point that is how much it is there depends upon how much sulfur implanting. More you implant, this spreads more and this moves up here. See from the Heisenberg's theory or the no two le levels can exist simultaneously. If you more implant more sulfur, more number of trap levels, they cannot exist in the same place, it will spread out. So, that is why it moves up there and you got the Fermi level moving closer and closer to conduction band. So, you are able to reduce this barrier head by putting more and more of those uh, more and more of those I think I should take this off okay. more and more of those uh, sulphur atoms. Okay. So, this is the IV characteristics of those short key barrier diodes. See, when I without sulfur, this is log scale, please remember 10 to the power of minus 6 ampere per centimeter square, that is the forward characteristics. Sulfur 10 to the power of 13, reverse current has increased, forward also has increased, pi times 10 to the 13, reverse current, this is 0, log scale large reverse current, large forward current, large 10 to 14 very close to ohmic contact. So, the ohmic contact is symmetric on log scale, in the linear scale it is like that. So, this is what will happen in this case. Okay. So, what I am trying to point out here is the uh, sulphur passivation has been the key thing people have been trying out. In fact, even in germanium it can be tried out. So, a lot of references are there, which uh, have come over the years 84 and on 2004. In fact, some work has been done here also on sulfur passivation. One of our uh, MS students, Arun, myself and Prasna Kanbat, Fermi level deepening at the germanium short key interface through sulfur passivation. That was not implantation, that was by chemical treatment. In fact, in Galea Marsnet also the pinning, deepening has been illustrated by using the sulphur passivation. So, when I discuss about the germanium, we will discuss that uh, in some more details. Of course, you can go through some one paper for short key barrier, this book also you can see and you can will this paper which has come in 2010, you can see. So, with that we will conclude our discussion on short key source chain contacts. We will take on germanium, go to new materials with classical and non-classical structures, we will discuss in next lecture onwards.